Happening now, the trial against a Jamestown man accused in a fatal shooting is slated to get underway. Plus, with the new vaccine mandates in place, what the county's health department is doing to make COVID-19 shots and booster doses at that more available. Well, some more showers and storms, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, will be possible later today. And then we'll see some more humid air. We'll talk about it next as the news at noon starts right now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. The trial for a Jamestown man charged in a 2019 fatal shooting will begin next month in Chautauqua County Court. Thank you for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. A court clerk tells us that Julio Montanez's trial will start with jury selection on October 4th. He currently faces a count of second-degree murder and two counts of second-degree attempted murder. The man was originally indicted in 2019 and then re-indicted last October after a judge David Foley dismissed the original case due to what he says were errors by former Chautauqua County District Attorney Patrick Swanson. Montanez is accused of shooting and killing 29-year-old Justin Gibbons following an alleged dispute in Sherman. The accused is being represented by the Chautauqua County Public Defender's Office and the Cattaraugus County District Attorney's Office is serving as the prosecution. Well, a slew of new COVID-19 vaccination clinics, including booster shot availability, will take place over the next two months in Chautauqua County. The county health department says Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson's vaccines will be available at all the clinics. The clinics will take place at the Chautauqua Lake Central School bus garage in Mayville on Tuesdays from 4 to 6.30 p.m. through October 26th. Vaccinations will also be available at SUNY Fredonia's Steel Hall on Wednesday, September 15th from 12.30 to 4.30. Officials say additional clinics will be added to the county health department's website as they're planned. No appointment is needed, however, pre-registration is available. Now, as for vaccine boosters, the health department says those will be given out to certain immunocompromised individuals. Officials say that patients should talk to their health care providers about their medical condition to see if they need a third dose. So far, over 68,000 residents countywide have received at least one dose of the vaccine, with nearly 62,000 people considered fully vaccinated, according to state statistics. Now, as for new infections, the county reported 219 new cases of the virus from Friday through Monday, with 374 active. Of those, 31 people are hospitalized, with 868 people in quarantine. An FDA committee is set to talk about the COVID-19 vaccine booster for the general public this Friday. If approved, it would mean a third shot for everyone who received a Pfizer vaccine. Moderna has also submitted data to the FDA for approval of their booster doses. But today, there's continuing debate over the necessity of a third shot. Mandy Gaither with more on what both sides are saying. In just days, the FDA could give the green light to COVID-19 boosters, a third shot for everyone who got the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, Moderna seeking the same for those who got its vaccine. For weeks, top U.S. health officials have said an additional dose may help provide further protection against the coronavirus. The durability of the protection tends to wane, particularly in the context of the Delta variant. But the booster debate took a turn Monday with this opinion piece published in The Lancet from an international group of vaccine scientists, including two retiring FDA leaders. It says COVID-19 vaccines do not currently show a need for boosting. The lead author saying, taken as a whole, the currently available studies do not provide credible evidence of substantially declining protection against severe disease, which is the primary goal of vaccination. One expert isn't ruling it out in the long run. In the bigger picture, I do believe that boosters will be likely needed. The timing and nuances of these are hard. On the other side of the booster argument, the FDA saying the views of the authors do not represent the views of the agency. We look forward to a robust and transparent discussion on Friday about that application. But about 75 million eligible people in the U.S. have yet to roll up their sleeves. Some experts say the focus needs to be on them. Let's get vaccine doses into people who are unvaccinated, and then we will see. I'm Mandy Gaither. Mandy, thank you. The Lancet paper also argued that the current COVID-19 vaccine supply could save more lives. 
if used in people who are not yet vaccinated than as boosters. In early August, the World Health Organization called for a moratorium on booster shots until at least the end of September. Well, a retired North County police chief has been named Jamestown Public Schools' next safety officer. The district announced that former Village of Fredonia Police Chief Brad Myers is taking on that role. Among his duties, Myers will plan, develop, implement, and monitor the district's safety procedures. Additionally, officials say he will supervise the safety officers, also known as red shirts, across the district. Myers will also conduct workshops with staff, students, and families about the importance of safety issues. That includes consultation and assistance for safety needs like drills, inspections, and other crisis response plans. He has over 35 years in local law enforcement as a police chief in Fredonia and a sergeant and police officer with Jamestown Police. Myers retired from law enforcement in 2021. Well, we thank you for joining us for WNY News Now. Let us know what you guys think about this story and more in the comment section down below. For those of you watching us on our Facebook Live and other streaming platforms, great to see Wendy. Uh, happy Tuesday to Elizabeth, Travis, Pamela, and Scott. Hopefully you're all having a great day. And we got to give a shout out to those of you watching us on TV too. If you aren't watching us here, it's so easy to stay connected now on your Roku device. Just search channel 716 and add it to your lineup today. Well, some of the other things we're watching today are the weather forecast, of course. Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter joining us live with that. And as promised yesterday, we got some uh, severe weather in the form of uh, rain, although not as severe as we saw over the weekend anyways. Yes, I mean, you know, the weather that we had last night really wasn't much. I mean, you know, the core of those storms, th that line as it moved across the Niagara Peninsula really moved more to our south. It more impacted Erie County, Pennsylvania than going down into that southern part of Warren County. But uh, we did have a couple thunder boomers early in the afternoon or mid to late afternoon and then a few more overnight. But right now, no storms downtown from the HD News Now Cam 75, southwest wind of 10. What season is this? I mean, I don't even think Mother Nature knows what month it is right now. 75 right now. And uh, the humidity has came up. 68's the dew point. So we do have a little bit of a heat index out there. So again, you'll be feeling it a little bit as you walk outside today. And that humidity is not really going anywhere anytime soon. So yeah, more summer air is on the way. But satellite and radar composites pretty uh, dry right now. Nothing going on across the region. But there will be, again, another chance for more scattered showers and storms as we go through the afternoon. But later in the afternoon, though. 74 was the high yesterday. Started the day at 61, so a little bit of a mild night. 92 and 33 are the record highs and lows for today. So through the afternoon, partly to mostly sunny, warm, quite humid. Storms arrive later in the afternoon. Again, towards the evening hour, 77 to 84 with a healthy southwest wind. Now, we will see some relief briefly coming our way tomorrow. Then the heat and humidity return as we go into the weekend. We'll talk about it in detail with that seven-day forecast later in the show. All Justin. right, Dakota, we'll see you back in 10 minutes' time to time it all out for us. Thank you. Well, the state senator who represents Chautauqua County is receiving recognition for his efforts to make a statewide farm to food bank program permanent. Senator George Borello was named by city and state to its Agriculture Power 50 list for his work with the Nourish and Y program. Borello is the ranking member of the Senate Agriculture Committee, and he shared that number 20 spot on the list with his colleague Assemblywoman Catalina Cruz. The pair worked together to champion Nourish and Wise expansion. The Farm to Food Bank program was drafted after he heard feedback from farmers and food banks alike last year. Those two groups equally facing challenges during the height of the pandemic, with farms having a tough time selling their products and food banks keeping their shelves stocked. The senator says over the past year, the efforts have grown into a vital new channel for moving fresh farm products to those in need. Governor Hochul has yet to sign it into law, though. Lawmakers have a big to-do ahead of them in Washington. Democrats say their top priority right now is the president's two-part spending package. The bipartisan infrastructure package has already passed in the Senate and a $3.5 trillion spending bill now in the works. But as Britt Conway reports, getting it across the finish line won't be easy. Senate Democrats are back on the hill and back to battling it out over the $3.5 trillion budget bill. Democratic leaders say they want the deal hammered out by Wednesday, and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has promised to bring it to the floor by the 27th. 
Bipartisan backing is unlikely, but under budget reconciliation, the bill can pass with just 50 Democratic votes. Problem is, the centerpiece of the president's agenda is stalling within his own party. One of the major issues, the price tag. I'm looking for a competitive tax break. Okay, I want to make adjustments and changes. One, one and a half, we don't know where it's going to be. Others say that's not nearly enough. When we increase job training programs, when we increase child care, people will get back to work. We've got to lower the cost of prescription drugs for people. We've got to expand Medicare to include dental, hearing aids, and eyeglasses. We have to maintain the $300 direct payment we're giving to working parents. But there still isn't a consensus over those health care provisions or climate provisions. Not to mention the debate over the tax hikes on the wealthy and corporations to pay for it all. The way you, that a compromise will most likely take place will be on how long these programs will be in place, uh, how large the programs will be. Uh, but the different components are pretty well um, supported at this point. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Britt, thank you. Coming up, the state's governor blasting new Texas's new abortion law. The steps she's taking to protect reproductive rights in our neighborhood. And later, wild weather both nationally and here at home. Deco Dakota joins us once again where a tornado touched down in western New York. He has the details as WNY News Now continues. Coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Welcome to Honest John's Pizzeria, where you are the most important customer. Everything from freshly made subs to the best of pizza and wings, Honest John's has it all. And don't forget the ice cream! Order online today or check out our two great locations with buffets ready for every appetite. Don't I have the best job in the world? Located along the Amish Trail, the Randolph Retail Company offers a variety of clothing, jewelry, and gifts for any occasion. Offering uptown merchandise at small town prices, our locally owned business balances quality and value. With complimentary gift wrap here at the Randolph Retail Company, we pride ourselves in personal service. Check out our Facebook page or stop in today at 127 Main Street Randolph, just a 20 minute drive from Jamestown. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. New York's governor blasted Texas's controversial abortion law yesterday. The new law makes abortion after six weeks of pregnancy illegal in that state. In response, New York Governor Kathy Hochul is launching a public information campaign to make women in her state aware of their rights. One of its targets will be women who travel to New York to obtain abortions. Hochul says it's up to women in the state to lead on the issue. All of a sudden, that sense of security we once had in our nation has been ripped apart, shredded. The security blanket no longer. You're denied the choice that should be yours as a woman. And something we took for granted by Texas, who thinks six weeks is the magic date that you should have been aware, you should know this. <laughs> and that is grotesquely unfair, what they're expecting. The governor goes on to say she's also working to update New York's regulations to allow physicians to prescribe medications that lead to abortions remotely using telemedicine. The state's first female governor was joined by other women leaders in the state, including Senator Kirsten Gillibrand and Representative Carolyn Maloney. 
Well, New York's Attorney General Letitia James secured over a half a billion dollars to resolve illegal stock and cryptocurrency sales. That's according to the AG's website. She made the announcement yesterday after a GTV Media Group and its parent company, Sacra Media Group, unlawfully took the money from investors. The agreement signed with the OAG lays out that the two companies were tied to a Chinese billionaire and previously to Steve Bannon while they sold stocks and promoted crypto off the state's radar. Well, right now, more than 9 million people are facing flood threats in Texas and Louisiana as Tropical Storm Nicholas takes aim at the already hard-hit Gulf Coast. John Lawrence has the latest on this storm that just made landfall overnight. I know it seems like we can't catch a break these days. Tropical Storm Nicholas, a slow-moving disaster, is taking aim at the U.S. Gulf Coast. In southeast Texas, gas tanks are filling up. Grocery store shelves are running empty and school has been canceled in Houston Tuesday as people prepare for the storm to strike. Get to where you are going to be by 6 p.m. tonight and stay there. Your life is the most important thing that you have. Be cautious as you travel about the Houston area in the Harris County area for the next few days. Extreme rainfall, up to 20 inches in some spots, is forecast to saturate parts of Texas and Louisiana and could trigger life-threatening floods. We could have rain two to three inches an hour, which many of our bayous and channels are not able to withstand. That would certainly flood roadways, but if that pans out, it could be a threat to the channels. It could be a threat to some structures. In Louisiana, where the state is still recovering from a hard hit by Hurricane Ida, a state of emergency has been declared. As of right now, with this projected path, the right side, or typically the, the side where most of the rain falls, uh, will be uh, in Louisiana. I'm John Lawrence reporting. John, thank you. Nicholas has so far left more than 130,000 homes and businesses without power there. Well, it's time to let your imagination run wild because September 14th, today, is National Live Creative Day. So take some extra time to experiment, discover, and dream. Unleash your inner child, create your masterpiece, or just get out of the same old routine. Rediscovering an old hobby can help you get creative and get your juices flowing. If you don't think you have a creative bone in your body, don't bind yourself by traditional constructs of creativity. Even looking at logical problems involving math or maybe computer code in a different way could lead to some unexpected results. Many of the world's greatest thinkers have also been some of the most creative, so give yourself permission to join them today. Hmm. I'd say we're pretty creative here, Dakota. I don't know about you, but uh, it, uh, writing, I think, is one of the best ways to be able to express yourself. And uh, when I was you know, growing up and in school, I never really thought of myself as a writer. I didn't even like it, as crazy mm -hmm. as that sounds. And, and now every day, you know, that's what we do, is we write stories and we, we tell those stories. And there's so many people who I've, I've blessed to meet along the way. Uh, creative thinkers, people who come up with new ideas. So you never know. You know, isn't there a saying out there where it's like three or four people have the same idea, but only one or two of them maybe actually act on it, and mm -hmm. one of them is successful and you know can make that idea a reality? So, well, you know, I wish I had a light bright again because that That'd was be like I was talented with those light brights. Like I could do like you know my specialty was the <laughs> my specialty was the Arby sign. <laughs> You could do the Arby's side. Yes. Oh, that's cool. And this is not a sponsored product placement. No, 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 no. Arby's is not an advertiser yet, but they could be if you're out there, Arby's, and you, you want us to talk about you every day. It's great to see Pam. Uh, good to see Chad, uh, Barbara, Bronson, uh, Sean, Don, David, Penny, and Joseph. Hopefully you're all having a great day. We thank you guys so much for joining us here on WNY News and Now. And one of the big things that we always talk about now is that weather forecast. And a lot of people may be looking to the skies today, Dakota, because they hear the word severe weather, mm -hmm. um, but not as severe as what some parts of our region saw on Sunday. 
Yes, well, this was actually after midnight on Sunday going into gotcha. Monday. And uh, the Weather Service in Buffalo has conducted a storm survey in Livingston County. That includes the city of Dansville, if you know where that is. And uh, it's pretty much near, uh, and uh, it's the easternmost part of the region, but they have conducted a storm survey and they have found damage in uh, Livingston County, just north of Dansville, that does correspond with an EF1 tornado. And uh, this was at 12.57 a.m. on uh, Monday morning, just after midnight as that squall line was coming on in. And this is what we call a spin-up tornado. This occurred within that squall line of uh, that uh, squall line of uh, storms and it was embedded. So there was no tornado warning for this, but there was a severe thunderstorm warning out for this particular storm. And, you know, it's hard to issue tornado warnings for these kinds of storms because they're small, they spin up, and oftentimes these things are are obscured by rain so even if you were to happen to have seen this thing you know you know even if you have saw it you know I mean you know you send it into the weather service by the time the weather service works up the warning the tornado has gone the warnings out we're on TV flapping our gums for 45 minutes and there's nothing out there so we can't warn for these small little tornadoes but fortunately no injuries or no fatalities with this but it was interesting the fact that they did find damage that did correspond with an EF1 tornado and we're not done with the severe weather yet the storm prediction center does have all of the southern tier under a low end marginal risk a level one out of five the newest update does include a standard slight risk a two out of five for a buffalo up to uh, uh basically up to the lake ontario shoreline but this is where the spc feels the better chance for severe activity will be and then we're under a marginal risk again for tomorrow at least the easternmost area from cat county further out to the east and uh, the same thing like we've had the past couple of days the main threats with these storms today is really going to be strong damaging winds maybe some ponding of water on roadways and maybe some small hail uh, could be possible as well with these storms so we'll watch them that's going to come later uh, in the day toward the evening hours and summer is not going anywhere so if you like the warmer air We've got some good news for you. The six to 10 day temp outlook from the Climate Prediction Center does favor much warmer air coming in. So if you have closed your pool for the season, you might want to rethink your decision here. So uh, we still got plenty of pool time left. So don't be afraid if you haven't gotten out to enjoy the pool. We've still got some time left. The stationary boundary still uh, hangs just a little bit to our south of the region. This is the next front that's going to come our way, and that's going to produce the, the scattered showers and thunderstorms this evening, and especially into the overnight hours. We'll see a few more. Uh, through the overnight hours as the uh, showers and thunderstorms kind of roll on through. So let's show you future scan here and uh, you'll be able to see that the, the uh, majority of the day should be mainly dry and uh, we'll see a few more scattered showers and thunderstorms popping up through the afternoon and uh, the main threat is really going to come with this that you see popping up right about here. This is going to be the main threat with those showers and thunderstorms that come in through the evening hours and overnight. They start to clear out and we'll see a few more popping up through the overnight by the morning hours tomorrow and then tomorrow we should be mainly dry and then as that cold front approaches we'll see much cooler air coming in for tomorrow so the zone forecast we'll talk about the inland areas temperatures likely upper 70s to around 80 what month is this I mean, Mother Nature doesn't know. I don't know. Next seven days coming up right now. 72 tomorrow. A little bit of a relief there. But the humidity returns on Thursday, 75. A scattered shower on Friday, 77. The weekend looking mainly dry. And then how about Monday? Lots of sunshine, lower 80s, but humid. We'll be right back. Don't go away. coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the tight. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. It's not just what we say, it's what we do. Local first, it isn't just our slogan. It's our mindset every single day. So whether you're watching our daily live streams or staying up to date with reports on our website and mobile app, 
You'll always see the same attention to detail from reporters who passionately care about our community, who have one goal in mind, to always put the facts first. For me, it's more than just getting the forecast right. What I love the most about my job is that I come into work every day to help break down the weather, letting people know how this is going to impact their day. We take pride that First Defense Weather is the only local weather team in the Southern Tier. We don't just copy and paste our weather from outside sources. Every part of our forecast is handmade right here in-house, something our team really takes pride in. What matters to you matters to us. Every story, every day. WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. Amazon is joining a growing list of retailers offering educational benefits to its employees. The online retailer now offering to cover over 100% of the cost of tuition as it battles for workers in the tight U.S. labor market. And economics for professors say this is a new trend in retail, with more companies dangling the prospect of a free college education as ways to attract and retain workers. Jen Sullivan has more in today's Consumer Watch. One, two, three, Amazon! Free tuition delivered by Amazon. The e-commerce giant is joining a growing list of retailers offering educational benefits to its employees. I think that this is a positive approach. It's going to potentially attract stronger workers. Starting in January, Amazon says it will pay the full cost of college tuition, including books and fees for any of its 750,000 hourly U.S. employees wanting to pursue associates or bachelor's degrees. They didn't graduate from college yet. Um, but that is definitely one of my goals in the near future. The online retailer isn't the only U.S. company offering these types of perks. Amazon's competitors, like Walmart and Target, had previously announced similar programs. Last month, Target rolled out a program that covers the cost of undergrad degrees at select schools. And in July, Walmart announced it would pay 100% of college tuition for Walmart and Sam's Club's associates. They may end up just competing against each other for more and more benefits and wages for the same uh, shrinking pool of workers. Amazon's announcement comes as retailers around the country face challenges hiring employees to staff stores and warehouses. Economists say dangling these types of perks is directly in response to the tight job market. They say it will help retain and attract more hourly employees. This is a way for them to compete without necessarily having to raise wages as much as they would. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. Jen, thank you. Dakota, Amazon's plan will also cover high school diploma programs, GED, and English as a second language certificates, too. Their employees have been with the company for at least 90 days are eligible for that. Employees must continue working part-time or full-time while taking those classes. Oh, interesting. I suppose you got to do anything to try to get good labor nowadays. Mm -hmm. So here's a question. Will corporate pay for our college education? Yeah, maybe. I, I'd hmm. Probably not, but that's the, that's the difficult thing, right? Especially with a job, <laughs> say like Walmart or Amazon, where maybe unless you're a manager or something, a lot of those positions aren't necessarily calling for, say, mm -hmm. a bachelor in nursing or right. something like that. And then you, you go into it, you do it, and then you go work somewhere else mm -hmm. after afterwards so well i mean you know you tough. work at walmart i mean some people do want to make like you know retail their career and right want to work their way which up. is great but you know for a lot of people it's just a job just to get right. them to pay the bills and just to get them through college and until they really want to do what until they do what they want to do right if that makes any sense right it does let us know what you guys think uh in the comments uh, down below i know we uh in addition to amazon we think of amazon i think of my phone i think of my tech news we we had some pretty big tech news overnight right yes so you need to get your apple doodads updated here because apple has issued an urgent software update to address critical spyware vulnerability the urgent update released monday plugs a hole in the iMessage software that allowed hackers to infiltrate a user's iphone without the user clicking on any links 
leaks, according to Citizens Lab. Now, our researchers say uh, that the vulnerability has been exploited by numerous surveillance software to spy on a Saudi activist. Hmm. It's been in use since February and has been used to deploy Pegas, a software made by the Israeli firm NSO Group. Now, officials say it's been used to spy on journalists and human rights activists oh. in multiple countries. Now, the firm has said its software is only sold to vetted customers for counterterrorism and law enforcement purposes. However, Justin, researchers say they have found multiple cases in which the spyware was deployed on descendants or journalists. Yeah, that's scary. I did the update this morning as mm -hmm. soon as I heard about this, so definitely going to have I'm to okay, keep I'm okay because I'm running all the betas. iOS 15, Mac OS Monterey. I'm protected on that. My moment. watch says it won't update, though. I think that's going to be a you problem. You need your I gotta, I gotta Apple get a Watch one. today, Justin. New I got Apple a... Watch. <laughs> that Series 3 is getting outdated. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.